Hello everyone, welcome back to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and this is Fashion Friday. So on this channel, every Friday, we'll be going over some of the best royal fashionistas out there. We'll be doing top 10 lists, a look at uh, the royal fashions of that week, if there happened to be a big tour, a couple of big engagements. So we'll be doing that every Friday. And today I'm really excited because we're gonna talk about seven of my all time favorite royal wedding dresses. Everybody loves a wedding, and I think royal wedding dresses are so unique and interesting, and there's some really, really fabulous looks out there, but there's also some not so fabulous looks. So in addition to sharing my seven favorite, I'm gonna share with you three that are not so my favorite or ones that I'm like, eh. So if feel free to follow along. Let me know what's your favorite or least favorite royal wedding dress. Do you agree with my list? Do you not agree with my list? Please let me know at the end. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh, and I forgot to mention, so my little dress guest right here on the bus, this is actually an Issa London dress in the same style that Kate Middleton wore when her engagement to Prince William was announced. Mine is in magenta. I almost got the sapphire one, the same style that she wore, but it was a little bit more expensive and I could only really get the magenta one, but I just love having this dress. I think it's so, so pretty. I've only worn it a handful of times because it, it, it works better on her body type than mine. Um, but I do absolutely love having it. And I think it's kind of like, I feel like it's a piece of fashion history, even though it's not the same dress. I, I know it's not like the same, same dress, but anyways. So, so for my kind of three least favorites. So I'll just try to go through these kind of quickly. Um, and these are just, you know, everybody has their own style that's perfectly fine. Um, but one of them is Princess Sophia of Sweden, her wedding dress. It's just, it's so generic that you could go to David's Bridal and pick out the same thing. Um, you know, for royal weddings, like kind of the fun of it is that you get a dress that is utterly unique that you can't find anywhere else. But I just look at her dress and go, I really feel like I could go to any wedding shop in the country and pick out that same dress. So it's just not that interesting. And then her tiara was very funny. Um, the setting was kind of like more like this rather than kind of like like my headband. Um, and so it just, it looked odd. They, they purchased that tiara for her and she's worn it quite frequently since. And she can change out those top little jewels. So she has emerald, she has pearls and she has turquoise um, that she can put in there. And so she, that way she kind of has her own tiara because the, there's, you know, three other ladies in the family, all blood print, um, you know, the two blood princesses. So Princess Madeline, Princess, Crown Princess Victoria and their mom. So uh, they kind of gave her her own. So she has something to um, to wear pretty frequently, but it's just so generic looking. Um, yeah, it's just not my favorite. And I didn't like, and I know this is a pet, like this is just my thing. I didn't totally like how the tattoo stuck out on the back of her neck. Um, she has a couple of tattoos. No, no, no worries about, you know, no problems with tattoos, but it's just in that kind of very, that kind of setting. Um, and it was, you know, one of those that has faded over time. So it's not really all that crisp anymore. So it's not, it just doesn't, it's just kind of, yeah, it's just, it's just not my favorite, very generic again. You could go anywhere and buy that same dress. All right, my other one is, this was a true disappointment for me. And this was um, Charlotte Katsuragi. So she is Grace Kelly's granddaughter. So she's the daughter of Princess Caroline. And so she has fabulous genetics, beautiful bone structure, gorgeous lips. I mean, she's a beautiful, striking woman. And <laughs> most of her wedding looks, I mean, they were all different. Um, she had like the civil wedding dress, which was short and had like three bows, which I swear I've seen that dress before and I can't remember quite where, but I swear I've seen that dress before. And then she had, um, very this much boho, um, I can't remember the designer name brand. I'll put it down below and, um, or I'm not sure if I can pronounce it right. And so she put that on, I mean, it's kind of, it's okay. But the last one is truly the worst, I think. And that is the Chanel dress, the Chanel dress. Oh my gosh, is that thing ugly? It was gorgeous. She wore a gorgeous necklace that belonged to her grandmother, Princess Grace. Um, but, uh, you know, just because of Chanel doesn't mean it's pretty, guys. Um, that dress is ugly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> and so I just was like really disappointed because I didn't like any of her looks. And she is just a gorgeous woman. And she's um, one of the brand ambassadors for Chanel now. She's been the brand ambassador of Gucci. Um, she's an equestrian. Um, she's, I think, written a book, if I'm right, or helped kind of create a book on um, philosophy. And so um, very interesting um, woman. But I just, yeah, I don't like any of those dresses. All right. And my other least favorite royal wedding dress, I'm sorry to say, is 
guys, Meghan Markle. Now, I know I'm not a huge fan of Meghan, but seriously still, I just don't like the dress. Um, the construction isn't great. Um, I, you know, some of the rumors are is that it was changing so constantly, the fit wasn't perfect. So it was seemed a little big on her, it wrinkled. Um, and it was just so plain and everything about the look was plain. So she wore minimal jewelry, minimal, um, makeup really. And so it was just, there was just nothing interesting about the look. She kind of was trying to go for the veil being the, the centerpiece and it kind of was, um, but the veil only really looked good on the steps of the church. Other than that, it like bunched because it was so long. And then when she was sitting down, it was like pulling at the side of her head. Um, it just was, I just didn't think a very great look. Her hair kind of fell apart as the day went on. And obviously, you know, that can not happen, but you know, it's a royal wedding, you know, it should be, your hair should be pretty good. Um, so that is on her hairdresser, but I just think it's just not the best. It's just really not the greatest royal look, I don't think. Um, and the veil, the also the meaning behind the veil. She said she did it, she put all the 53 Commonwealth countries flowers on the veil. And her and Harry, um, at the time when she married him, she became the vice president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. He is the president. He was the president. Um, but it was just kind of like, she thought, you know, she was like, oh, my family will, you know, my new family will really appreciate that. And I just kind of wanted to go, well, why? Because the Commonwealth, you know, um, there's the Commonwealth Games, like they're all former British colonies. That's why these countries can be in the Commonwealth is that they are former colonies. However, they're not in the Commonwealth to be represented by the monarchy, really. They're in the Commonwealth because it's an economic agreement. So if you are a country, let's say if you are the Bahamas or Jamaica and you want to, uh, you know, have a better trade agreement with the UK, you join the Commonwealth and you get trade benefits from it. And so that's why people join the Commonwealth is not because of the monarchy. It's because of the the benefits that they get from it especially smaller countries obviously the queen is still a head of state in canada and australia most likely when she passes away those things will change and they're not even they're not even the president and vice president of the queen's commonwealth trust anymore since megxit and so i felt like the whole effort was kind of bizarre and wasted and also there may be a bit of hubris involved as the only other royal who um you know because obviously princess diana and uh, um and Duchess of Cambridge will both be technically kind of queen consorts of the Commonwealth when their husbands had become king. Obviously, Diana and Charles divorced, but Kate will become queen's consort of the Commonwealth. However, the only person in the royal family who ever put the flowers of the Commonwealth on their dress besides the queen who did it for her coronation was Meghan Markle. So it's just, yeah, a little odd. So Anyway, it's probably just an excuse to have a really long veil and the really long veil, honestly, except for on the steps of the church, it just totally didn't work. Um, it could have been shorter and been, I think, much better and still been dramatic, but not so ridiculously long that it bunched. And then she's grabbing it and pulling it down the steps. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all that gorgeous embroidery and you're just dragging it on the ground. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. All right. So guys, <laughs> now we'll get on to seven of my favorite royal wedding dresses. All right. And number seven, I actually had done this video before, but I decided to redo it and I'm actually changing the last spot. So the last spot is going to go actually to Kate Middleton. So I think her dress is iconic. I think it is totally appropriate for her position. It's beautiful. It has just a hint of sexiness with the low neckline, but it's also very appropriate for her position as a royal. The tiara was great. The jewelry was great, but I did not like her makeup and I did not like her hair. So Kate decided that she wanted to do her own makeup for her wedding. I get that. Most of the day was probably completely out of her control, but she had this one thing she could do. Hey, I get it. Um, but, <laughs> but, the makeup was not good. Um, the blush was kind of too severe. Um, she was doing this thing, especially early in the, her marriage where she was um, lining the entire bottom of her eye. And she has smaller eyes like I do. And so I never line my complete, the, the complete bottom of my eye because it makes my eyes look smaller. Some people can do it and their eyes look fantastic. Me, I do it and my eyes look smaller. And so um, it opens up your eyes to only do it about halfway and do something. If you're gonna continue it, do it like very light and sh kind of, almost yeah shadowy type of thing and so um it's just and sometimes there's too much white too so it just wasn't 
the greatest um, eye makeup look. And then her hair, like I don't really think we've seen her do that kind of same exact style much before. I think I would have preferred maybe looser curls or maybe her hair up something. I don't know. It just didn't work for me. I like the, the blowout she did for um, her reception and her reception dress seems lovely. I would have loved to see it without the little jacket. You can totally tell it's like 2011 because she has that short little jacket. Remember when those were in style? Yeah. So she, um, that little fussy jacket thing, but, um, it's, you know, I think it's a gorgeous, timeless, classic look. I think it'll age very well. Um, and so, um, that was obviously by Alexander McQueen. And so I think that dress is, you know, I think that dress will stand the test of time. Um, and so anyways, but my number six, which was originally my bottom one. And honestly, it's because we have not seen the whole dress, but just the aesthetic of it is gorgeous and Disney princess. So this is Tatiana Santo Domingo. She is a Colombian socialite, basically, um, an heir. She inherited about $2 billion um, from her grandfather who ran this brewery. And so um, she's a very, very wealthy woman and she married Andrea Katsuragi. So that is Charlotte's older brother. So that is um, Princess Grace of Monaco's um, grandson. And so um, her wedding to me was a total surprise. So they did have this civil ceremony. She wore a Masani dress, some flowers in her hair. She's very much boho. And both her and Andrea oftentimes look like they haven't showered. Um, that's kind of the signature other look. Um, but she, every once in a while, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like most recently at the Monaco National Day, she looked divine. She had this great look, very sophisticated. Um, so clearly her style is evolving, which is fantastic. But her wedding look is Winter Wonderland with a tiara and it is awesome. So she had her wedding, I believe it's in Gestat in um, Switzerland. So obviously very up, upper crust. Um, and so she wore a fur coat with a hood and a fringe tiara loaned to her by Prince, Princess Caroline. It's, it's just, I'm, we haven't ever seen the full dress, but just the looks of it with the snow falling because they had some paparazzi pictures of it. We don't have any official pictures of it, but oh my gosh, it is just divine, especially with the hood up and the tiara on. There's just something so like magical about that. And so I just see that and you go, oh my gosh, like it's just such a surprise because she's just very much low key relaxed, but this was very high brow. And you know, even her sister-in-law Charlotte didn't, didn't wear a tiara at her wedding. And you know, she's from the, <laughs> the uh, Monaco bloodline. So I just absolutely loved her look. It was just so Disney winter princess, like frozen. Like it was just incredible. I mean, we only have a couple of pictures of it, so I'll show you what we've got, but I just love that Royal wedding look. Just absolutely fantastic. All right, guys. So my number five royal wedding look is Grace Kelly. Um, her wedding look is iconic. Absolutely. It has stood the test of time. Actually, when Kate Middleton first work, walked out of the car, I went, oh my gosh, you went for a Grace Kelly look. Uh, that was literally my first thought. Um, I'm not totally convinced of that now, but I mean, how can you not love Grace Kelly's look? It's so iconic, so classic, so elegant. Grace Kelly, Oh my gosh, I love her films with Alfred Hitchcock, um, especially Rear Window. She has some just gorgeous pieces. And like the the when she comes into frame in Rear Window for the first time and it's close up of her face, oh my gosh, she's just she's just beautiful. Um, and so uh, she married Prince Renier of Monaco in the 1950s. I'm blanking on the exact year. Um, and so she it was just a big deal because she was kind of the first, um, Americans had, married into royalty before, but she was really the first big name actress and she was quite young. Uh, she was 26, 27 when she married him. She had only made 11 films, guys, and won an Oscar already. She did High Society, that's what she won her Oscar for, and she was she did it with Frank Sinatra. So she worked with Hitchcock, Frank Sinatra, um, Cary Grant. I mean, she had, for her brief time in Hollywood, she had such an impressive resume. That's why when people like, compare Grace Kelly and Meghan Markle, there's just really no comparison. Grace Kelly had a, a fabulous career. She was a fabulous actress. Um, if you haven't seen Rear Window or Dial In For Murder or um, To Catch A Fe Thief wasn't my favorite, but her fashion there is beautiful. And so she just looks great in this, in this design. It was made by, um, I can't remember the exact name. I'll put it down below, but it was one of the um, dressmakers from Hollywood actually made that dress. Um, and I'm really bummed it wasn't Edith Head. I would have loved to see what Edith Head would have done. 
So Edith Head is like iconic when it comes to Hollywood fashion design. She won like, I want to say seven or eight Oscars or something. And she was also the inspiration for Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Um, and so she did the fashions um, for a lot of Alfred Hitchcock movies. She also did the fashion for um, White Christmas. I mean, a ton of iconic movies she was involved in and she made some absolutely gorgeous gowns. I would love to see what she had done, but still Grace Kelly's look, um, I think it's perfect. It fits with the occasion and it's just so lovely. Um, I know she really struggled in Monaco, especially being unable to act again it was really hard on her, but she really did try to find her niche. Um, and it's just so tragic. She died in her fifties. Um, she had, I believe it was maybe a mini stroke or something and actually drove off one of the cliffs in kind of the, the south of France with her daughter Stephanie in the car, um, which is very much a tragedy. And so um, just, and she met Diana briefly before she died and gave her a bit of not so great advice. Just, uh, just saying, you know, Diana, it was like her first big engagement asking, you know, well, you know, is, is, and Grace, she asked her some sort of question. I can't remember exactly what Diana asked her and Grace said, well, it'll only get worse, honey. <laughs> so that was her, that was her, her bit, but um, Grace Kelly, iconic, beautiful, love it. All right, guys, so number four. And um, number four to me is what Meghan, Meghan Markle was trying to go for, but did not achieve. And that is Crown Princess Victoria's look is just stunning. It's it's simple, like it's, it's, it's construction is, is not complicated. It's not fussy, but it's just beautiful. And the statement piece is both kind of the veil and the tiara. And so the tiara is kind of like, you first see it and you go, eh, but like when you really know the history behind it, it's a really beautiful piece. It's been in the family. The family name of the Swedish Royals is Bernardo, so it's actually French. And so it's uh, the cameos at the top of the tiara were actually given to, um, to Empress Josephine by her husband, Napoleon. So there's a lot of very long history um, with that tiara. It's apparently very delicate. Um, the Swedish Royals did a, a video series a couple years ago where they actually kind of showed kind of close up some of these tiaras and Victoria was talking about it and it's apparently a very delicate make. And so it's just gorgeous. And I just love the simplicity of the construction of the dress, but it's just so powerful, fit her so, so well. And I love her veil too. One of the things that gets me about the veil is that it has, you know, this beautiful lace detail. Um, there was nothing that went over her, her face, but from the back, especially because she has very dark hair, the lace really stood out against um, kind of her bun and it just looked from the back absolutely gorgeous. Um, she was actually on a fashion high right before her wedding. She like had this gorgeous Ellie Saab dress that she wore recently for her 10 year anniversary pictures. Stunning, 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 beautiful dress. She does gala dresses usually very well. She's had some definite misses. <laughs> I'm like, what were you thinking? Um, but she really can do va va boom very, very well. I just absolutely love this royal wedding look. Um, her and Dan Prince Daniel are so in love. I think they've, you know, they've had their struggles. Um, so they had to wait a lot of years to get married because he was a personal trainer. And so, and there was a rule in Sweden for a while as well. If a woman married a non-royal, she would kind of lose her title and privileges. So they really had to make an exemption because she's like, I want to marry him. And so they were able to do that. And she just looks, I think, just absolutely fabulous, such joy, such love. And they show so much of the Swedish weddings. Like we see the reception, we see like all the royals go out and like they're all crying and there's like, you know, a tiara event. So it's just absolutely stunning. I just love her look. I think it's so classic. And if you're going to go for simple and elegant, her look is definitely, I think, what you wanna go for. All right, guys, so number three is, um, the, and the next two were surprises for me, but they both knocked it out of the park, and that is Princess Eugenie. Um, Princess Eugenie, like her style, uh, her and her sister, their styles hit and miss, but I think her wedding, she knocked it out of the park. The dress was gorgeous. I love the fit. I love how it's kind of has a bit of the low back so she can show off her scar from her scoliosis surgery. I'm just showing other women as well and young girls, hey, if you have scars, don't be afraid of them. Um, you know, you're beautiful with or without them. And so she's just, uh, it was just such a great statement to make. And that emerald tiara, we have not, we have not seen that before. I don't think it was from a big, um, so in the UK, 
if you, um, everybody is hit kind of with an inheritance tax and the more money you have, especially the more ancient, like, you know, artwork and jewelry you have, the bigger your inheritance taxes. So to avoid that, you can donate it to the crown and you don't get hit with that inheritance tax. And um, this lady Grenville, that's what she did. She donated apparently many, many jewels to the queen, including that tiara, which we had never seen before. Uh, so Eugenie was the first in the family to wear it. It was just gorgeous, a stunning, stunning look. I was just, you know, I was expecting something else, maybe the York tiara. Um, there's a couple other tiaras that have been in the vaults for many, many years that we haven't seen. And so that was truly just kind of a surprise and just a lovely bit of fun. Um, I loved how, you know, her and Jack, it was just obviously such um, a wedding of love. And so I just thought it was beautiful. I thought she looked so, so, so happy. I just love the look. Thinks, I think it's perfect. And I just think it really, really worked. And it was just very much a surprise. All right, guys. So number two, again, this was a super big surprise, but I love the history and just really, um, the honoring of her grandmother she did, and that is Princess Beatrice. Um, she wore a dress that her grandmother wore to the um, movie premiere of Lawrence of Arabia in London. Um, she wore her um, Girls of Britain and Northern Isle, um, Britain and Ireland, Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. Um, the Queen did with that look, and it's just so so gorgeous so timeless they had to add a bit of length to it but it's just really you know from the kind of the you don't see dresses like that anymore really it's kind of from the heyday where like a movie premiere was a tiara event um you don't see that anymore so it's just so incredible to see that look on um beatrice and i just love like the honoring of her grandmother and i love really that her wedding was about them wanting to be married not waiting till the pandemic's over and then they can finally because they could have waited but I loved how they wanted to go ahead and get married and so um, she went with something she could have gotten her own dress and because she, she can't really keep that one but I just love what she did and what to me was the most exciting is that she wore Queen Mary's fringe tiara so now this is a tiara that was worn by Princess Elizabeth, so the, the queen at the time of her wedding. It was worn by Princess Anne at her wedding, and now it's been worn by Princess Beatrice at her wedding. So what all those three women have in common is that they are the blood princess of their, the, the firstborn blood princess of their generation. And so I think the next time, guys, we will see that tiara on a royal bride is Princess Charlotte. She would be the fourth generation to do that, which I just love. I just really, really hope sometimes Kate and William, you know, they want to do things differently, but I love that if that's a tradition that started, um, I really hope they're able to continue that. I would love to see that with Princess Charlotte, but I just love Beatrice's look. It was very enchanting, very like, you know, like they're in the woods and, you know, they got married and there's nobody else around. There was something very like beautiful and kind of, um, mystical in a way about it. Um, it's just kind of a fairy tale in so many different ways, you know, the church and that the fact that the queen and the Duke of Edinburgh were there is fantastic. So I just absolutely love that royal wedding look. It's just my second favorite. All right. So guys, any guesses about what my favorite royal wedding look will be? So can we get a bit of a drum roll, please? Okay. So my favorite royal wedding look is probably a bit of a surprise because neither the bride nor the groom have any sort of titles and but it is probably one of the bluest blood weddings in this whole list and that is the wedding between Pierre Katsuragi yes another Katsuragi and Beatrice Bormio so Pierre's again grandson of Grace Kelly he's um the youngest son of Princess Caroline and um and Beatrice Bormio. So she is Italian aristocracy. And her family literally goes back centuries. Like the Bormian Islands outside Milan, they're named for them. She has a saint in her bloodline from like 1500s. That's how old her family is. Um, but her parents were not married when she was born and never got married. Um, so she never inherited. I believe she would have been a dom, I believe is the title. But she, um, because they weren't married, she couldn't inherit that title. But um, obviously both of their families have long, long roots. And so, um, but her wedding look, she had five of them. I loved every single one of them. They were different, they were unique. And like the creme de la creme, 
time is her last look. So kind of the first is uh, she had a, cer a civil ceremony and she wore Valentino. Um, she had kind of some flowers in her hair. It was very much like kind of a little flower tiara. She had some interesting and unique sleeve details. It was kind of a muted, it looks lavender. I've heard it's pink, but it looked lavender to me dress i just love it i think it's gorgeous kind of light and airy and just kind of very very beautiful and then for her reception she wore valentino again and she wore this um um dress that had kind of was backless but had like little bitty straps but had like these clouds details on it with like shimmer and sparkle and i'm like oh that's just like so like oh light and airy and fun um i just I just love that look. Um, we only got, you know, far distance pictures of it because they are private citizens very much. They do um, go to like the Monaco National Day and like the Rose Dinner, which is a big deal, but they don't go to much else. And so I just love that look though. Um, and then the next look she did, kind of a reception look, um, that was uh, Alberto Ferretti. And again, it very much had this boho vibe, but I love like the curls in her hair, the flowers in her hair, just very much the laid back. I believe they did this on the Bormian Islands um, outside Milan. So it was just very much a, a fun and relaxing um, event and she looked gorgeous. But for her religious ceremony, these are my two favorite looks. So the first is her, um, her dress from Giorgio Armani. It is classic bride. Um, the veil is long, but not too long. Um, it has a, 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 um, a um, embroidered detail on it. It's just beautiful. Um, her hair looks beautiful. I just think it's, it's just a gorgeous, like classic bride, but beautiful. I'm sure like if we could see the, um, the details and look at it. I mean, I'm sure more things would come out. Unfortunately, we only have a couple of still pictures, uh, a couple from the, the, the wedding itself. And then another one from when she was like doing some fittings that ended up in like Vogue, I think. And so I just, it's like my favorite word. Like if I'm looking for a dress, it's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to look towards that end. But her, her crowning achievement, I think was her um, reception dress after her um, religious ceremony. It was, she was very much channeling her grandmother, her grandmother-in-law, Grace Kelly. And um, this is a, another Giorgio Armani piece. It's very light airy. They're on the Bormian Islands. It is like gorgeous. And she's just walking and it's like, she's walking on air. Like she's like walking on clouds. It's just like very drapey, very long. It really reminds me of kind of Grace Kelly and to catch a thief. And so, um, I just, I just love that look. And it was just, again, such a surprise. And you see her walking and it's like, if you had seen that, you would have been like, Oh my gosh, like how could you pick? like a more perfect gown. I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. All of her looks, you know, five of them together. And then like, I think it was the day after she had one of those, um, those clutches where you can put, you know, your name on it. And she had one that said Mrs. Kasaragi, which I kind of loved. And so I just thought her whole wedding was just absolutely, you know, what the images we got from it were gorgeous. Um, she has a fantastic taste. All right, guys, I just love all her wedding looks and it's just hashtag bride goals. So anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll be doing again, these fashion Friday videos every week. It'll either be over like, you know, if somebody's done a tour, or if there's a lot of looks like a state visit or something, we'll be doing it on that, or we'll be doing it on, you know, kind of these top 10 lists. What are my favorite looks from Kate Middleton, Meghan Markle, um, you know, uh, you know, Queen Maxima. I love her style. And so Queen Letizia, um, there's just so many, um, beautiful royal ladies out there. And so we'll be just looking at the style, maybe the men from time to time. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would love to have you back. We have so much content coming. I'm going to do Tiara Tuesdays too, I think every other week. And so next week for the first one will be the Stuart Tiara, which is just divine. And I'll be doing kind of royal commentaries and royal um, news updates. So yes, please subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye.